Hey guys, welcome to Repurpose My Way. I'm Shelly. Today we're going to make some grubby candles and it's going to be so much fun. All right, so welcome and here we go. So I'm just going to tell you the ingredients that you're going to need and the thing, the supplies that you're going to need as well to make these grubby candles. Now, if you don't have these wooden stars like I have, I got these at Michael's, find something that you want to grubby up and use it. It works on most things. I think I've even used it on glass and this works. Uh, because you're using Mod Podge, Mod Podge works on just about everything. So. Um, and if you don't have Mod Podge, school glue with a little bit of water just to loosen it up a little bit because it is a little bit thicker than Mod Podge is, but not a lot. Just some school glue and just a little bit of water and you'll have yourself something that you can use as well. So today we're gonna grubby up these stars. I got a couple here. I've already started to do a few because I'm experimenting today. I wanna try some different colors as well. Typically when you use the rubby mixture that I use, uh, a lot of the spices that you use are dark colored. Uh, actually all of the spices that I use are dark colored. The only thing that isn't is Mod Podge, which dries clear. So I add a little, little bit of paint to it and I'm gonna show you how it came out. And I really love it. I think it would be great for winter decor or even uh, Christmas decor and I think it's going to be something that we can experiment with later on and make like candy cane candles and things like that. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So the other thing that you're going to need, let's see, so just something to grubby up. I have some candles from Dollar Tree. These are a dollar. You can get the whole pack of the tea lights and do those as well. Even though they're plastic, it works. Grab yourself a pan with a little bit of a lip on it. This one I've already started using, obviously. Um, and grab something like that, or you could use a bowl or a baking pan, or even just aluminum foil. Just something so when you're putting your grubby mixture on top of whatever you're grubbying up, it doesn't all go all over the place, and you'll be able to dump it back in your bag so you don't lose a bunch of it. So you have your stuff you're gonna grubby, you have your pan, grab some Mod Podge, it uh, doesn't have to be this big. I just use a lot of it, so I grabbed a big container of it. Um, that or, like I said, school glue with uh, just a little bit of water. Mix it up together just to loosen it up a little bit. You don't want it real watery so that it drips, but you do want it so it's easily spreadable um, and not super thick. The other thing you're going to need is some spices. Now I have some ground cloves here. I'm not going to use this whole thing. I typically get my spices at... Dollar Tree or somewhere very inexpensive. We also have a uh, Ocean State job lot or something like that um, that you can get them very inexpensively as well. I wasn't near there um, but the Dollar Tree didn't have the cloves so I'm just taking it out of my pantry. This is from Walmart. It's organic so I'm not going to use a lot, a lot of it but I love the smell of cloves in my in my mixture. I have some whole cloves in this little jar. That's all I had left, so I put it in this little ball jar. I'm going to put those in there just for some added texture. Uh, Dollar Tree pumpkin pie spice. Now, any of these you can omit if you don't like the smell of them, the color, whatever. I'm just trying to get some variation and some different smells in there. So this is pumpkin pie spice from Dollar Tree. And then I've got ground cinnamon from Dollar Tree. And I also have some ground coffee. Now you also can use, um, this is just plain regular instant coffee, but you also can use vanilla flavored coffee or your hazelnut coffee. It Just know that it's going to make your candle, give your candles that smell um, and whatever strongest is going to come out. So that whole mixture is just going to have a, just a grubby, um, spicy mix um, that I think smells great. So we're going to start mixing uh, and I'm going to grab, I just grabbed a clear bowl so you guys could see, and I grabbed a clear um, a gallon size Ziploc bag and put it inside there just to give it some, so that it will stand up so that I can show you guys what I'm doing here. It doesn't smell too bad. I've also used vanilla or hazelnut bean, whole beans. Um, if you, as long as you have a grinder, you can 
grind down whatever amount that you want and you can put that in as well. Uh, I've been having trouble finding whole beans lately so I because I kind of wanted to do the vanilla but I couldn't find any and Dollar Tree had this whole jar for a dollar so we're going to go with it. So I'm just going to eyeball this first. I'm not going to put initially the whole jar in. This is a 2.8 ounce jar so I'm just going to put in um, I may eventually put the whole thing, which I probably should just put the whole thing in, but it's about half a jar there. I'm going to put in some pumpkin spice. I am going to put the whole thing of this in because I want to make a big batch because I'm going to be doing a bunch of the grubbying. So I want to make sure that um, I get all this. And then you can turn around and use these for stuff. So I don't think I'm going to throw it away. I'm going to try and think of something that I can use those for. Uh, ground cinnamon. It smells really cinnamony. So depending on how much cinnamon you want in there, um, and it's a little bit of a lighter color than everything else, so depending on how dark or light you want it, I'm going to put the whole thing in there. We're just going to be crazy and do that. All right, so we're going to put some cloves, which is super strong, but I love the smell of it. So that's probably, I'd say I put about a tablespoon in there, and that's all I'm going to do for that one. Oops because I did save, and it's very fragrant, it's a lot stronger than everything else. I did save some cloves from my last one that I didn't use, and I'm gonna put all those, I guess, in there, just to give it some texture. All right, so everything is in the bag. This is what it looks like. And I'm just gonna move it back and forth. I have all this coffee left, and I probably won't use it for anything else. I'm going to pour the rest of it in here. Oh boy, that smells so good. So I got about that much in there. Let's see. Now before I forget, you're also going to need a paintbrush to paint on your Mod Podge. And also if you're going to use these candles like this, the taper candles, you're going to want something to put them, set them in as they dry once you get them done. So uh, I have this little star stand for mine and then I also have I just had this kicking around and then you also need uh, something like wax paper or newspaper to set your um, products down to dry once you've got them all covered with your Mod Podge spices and then Mod Podge again so that they'll have a place to dry. Okay so I have this little styrofoam uh, plate that I have left over from Christmas. Uh, I took a little bit of Mod Podge and put it in here. Now the reason why I don't take my Mod Podge out of my container uh, directly is because as you're putting on your second coat after you've put your spice on there, it sticks to your paintbrush. When you stick that back in your Mod Podge, it gets really messy. As you can see on the edges here, hopefully, um, you can see there that it turns it a different color. I don't want my Mod Podge all to be a grubby color, so that's why I do it that way. So I have my paintbrush, and I'm going to start, let's see, let's start with my candles, because the, just because the area is a little bit bigger. Pull up the wicks in the middle, that helps, gives me something to hold on to, and then I'm going to dip into my Mod Podge mix. Hopefully you guys can see that. And just get a big heaping bunch of it and put a thin coat all around. Now this is another reason why I don't use white candles. They'll work just fine. But for the grubby uh, part of it, um, I can see with a colored candle, I can see the white uh, mixture over the top of it and where I've missed parts and got too much and things like that. If it was white it would be a little bit harder to see. All right we'll put that on there and then we're gonna put this one on all the way around. I'm not gonna do the top yet until I get the sides done. Just gives me a place to hold on to because if not everything that you touch once you get all this on it's gonna stick to you or it's going to want to. Alright, so I just do nice long strokes 
so that it's all even. And then I'm gonna take my mixture that I just made up and I got it all mixed up and it smells so delicious. And I'm just gonna sprinkle it on. That's why a um, pan is so good because then you can catch it and put it back in the bag when you're done. Oh boy, this smells so, so good. And then I just kind of bang it off a little bit so the excess comes off and then I give it a spin and I see where I'm missing, missing parts. Now if you want this extra chunky, you could go over it again. You could put more Mod Podge and then more uh, mixture, spice mixture. All right, we're going to let that sit for a minute. Oop, and then we're going to do this one as well. We can take it from the pan too. There we go. And if it doesn't get completely covered, for me, that's fine. That's part of primitive decor or rustic decor is it's not perfect. And that's what I like. Also, there's no way I could make it perfect. Okay. Sometimes I make things perfect and then make them unperfect. My husband doesn't understand that a lot of the time. He said, why do you paint that up perfect and then you turn around and distress it and give it imperfections? Because that's what I like. That's my style, honey. Now I'm doing the top and you just go to the edge as much as you can. If you miss any spots, you see any pieces that are missing, it's fine. I'm just going to take from here and just put it on. And then kind of kind of bang it off and then I'm going to put it over onto my paper Oop, and there's a little bit there that I didn't get and that could be because I don't have glue on it or Mod Podge Nope, that looks like it's gonna work all right so we're gonna set those aside and let them just do their thing um, I'll let the Mod Podge underneath kind of dry a little bit and hold on to that, those spices. And we'll just go on to our next thing, which is going to be these wooden stars. Now, if I thought of it, I should have done something in glass as well. I was trying to do um, something in all different varieties that you might use this on so that you can see that it will work on everything. There we go. Just hold it by the edges and I just kind of bang it off and there's one of our stars. Okay, now I'm going to bring over my, um, my holders for my candles, for my taper candles. And we're going to start with this one. Now this one has, I don't know if you can see it, but this one has like fake drips going down, like that's an actual candle with the drips. So I try to make sure, and I loosen this up to hang on to. I try to make sure I get in um, all those grooves as much as I can because when you're painting one way you might miss down in the in the hole there you kind of want to get that and I go all the way down to the edge of my battery compartment and not to this tip part here I kind of unscrew it a little bit so that it doesn't um, glue up on me it gives me more to hang on to. And then I do around my, I notice my, there we go. My bulb was a little loose. All right. So try to do in the grooves everywhere all the way to the top. Now you don't have to do the top if you don't want to, if you like to see the flame a little brighter. You could just do the body of the candle. I'm trying to, I try to get all the puddles out too. I don't want puddles in there. All right, let's see. Kind of tip it a little bit and let it run down. Oh yeah, some good coverage. And then I tip it this way and get down in the groove around the bulb part. It's pretty forgiving stuff, really. If you make a mistake and you accidentally touch it and it comes off, you can always Mod Podge that spot and then just put some more on there. It's really 
it looks like it wouldn't be forgiving, but it is. And again, I didn't do the very bottom because we're going to do that after when I can hang on to this part. So this is like a two-step thing. Or you could take the bottom off completely and do that separate. It's just hard to hang on to when you're trying not to touch the parts. So I feel like as long as you're not in a super, super big hurry, you can just leave it like this and come back and do this. Or like I said, you don't have to do this part. Okay, so here's my two um, Dollar Tree candles. And I'm going to start sealing them with the regular clear, just regular Mod Podge. It's going to dry clear. And sometimes it resists. So you, I just kind of pat it on there and make it kind of puddle. And then for some reason that works. And then you're able to get it on there. But you definitely use more Mod Podge in this step than you do in the first step. Pat it on there all around your wick and then I kind of paint it just kind of tamp it on there around the edges and you sometimes need to do this and then this there we go that one is done, except for the drying. Dry time. white. This is the same process but I took another dish and let's pull this out just a little bit here. I took another dish and I did it here with this wooden star as well and I mixed in a little bit of, it's not really white, it's plaster, the chalk paint, and I mixed it in with a little bit of Mod Podge, just a tiny bit of paint and some Mod Podge and I covered it just like I did everything else. And this one is a white color. Now when this dries, which is, it's getting there, it's, it's touchable, um, it will stay this color. This is what it will stay. It's a little bit wet right there. I don't know if you can see, it's a little brighter. But as it dries, it gets a little bit duller. And you can see all the bumps in there. And that's all your spices just kind of bumping out. Now if you want to go over this again with... Um, uh, more Mod Podge, the clear, and then a little bit of your spice mix and just sprinkle it on there. You could have like the white underneath and then the mix over the top and just kind of give it a layered look. Um, but I think this is really cool because you could do any color, just a little bit, because this is this glows. Let me see if I can turn this on. I'm not sure if I can do that one-handed. Let me try. Okay, look at how pretty that is all lit up with the white on it. I think that's so pretty. I love it. Okay guys, best to let these dry 24 hours um, and till they're not tacky anymore and you can touch them and the stuff won't stick to your fingers and come off. So hope you tried this. Let me know if you do. 
Some of these products will be on my Etsy shop for you to purchase if you're interested. So please go over and check it out. There's a link down in the description. Also, there's a link to these candles down in the description to Amazon and anything else that I can find that you would want to use here. Thanks for watching guys. Please like, share and subscribe and have a great day.